Booktube. It's Carrie with Floss Boss Stitches on Etsy. How are you this week? I hope all is well. Um, I'm here on the west coast of Florida, so we dealt with Hurricane Hermine this past seven days, which kind of threw me off on my first week of being involved in the community and Stitch Mania and Floss Tube had big goals. And I did get a lot of progress done, but it just was really different than what I thought it would be. Um, the kids have been back to school for like two weeks and then the hurricane comes and we live in a flood zone. So like even particularly bad is just this little piece of neighborhood. And on our street, our house was the furthest underwater. It was ridiculous. Looking out, you could see street this way, you could see street that way and in front of our house lake. Um, so we were dealing with that and the kids didn't go to school even an extra day um, because I just knew what would happen by noon. I mean, they have school in session and then they're calling to say, school's out two hours early. I'm not driving my car through four feet of salt water so that my kid can go to a half day where nothing's gonna happen. Um, so I just kept them home and then school was canceled two more days after that. So I had a lot of company. Um, my daughter is 17, Allison, and she did stitch with me, so she did a start. Um, she started a little Rapunzel figure. Um, she has a few other whips too, a few, and even a little stash, so I'll have to have her on one day. And my son, Gabriel, who is 13, um, tried his hand on my pattern generating software, and he made a funny little pattern. I told him that he would have to stitch it because he was kind of on a, let's call it a break from screen time. And uh, this was a way for him to get on the computer to work on a design. So I was like, don't just be trying to play on the computer, you're gonna stitch it. Well, this is what he came up with. He told me it's an emblem. So we'll see if he starts that. That's funny. So that's what this past week kind of was. Our, um, we have a low lying room that was an extension at some point before we moved here. Um, and it generally floods quite a bit. We've lived here 11 years and had to do insurance claim on it. Now this will be the second time and honestly a few other times probably could have been. But um, you know every five years having to tear out flood damage is kind of feels frequent and like I said probably could do it a little more often than that. Um, so what a pain but luckily everyone was safe. We didn't even lose any power which is nice because you know, we were able to just Netflix and stitch and not get hot and gummy and, you know, we didn't lose any food. So, uh, comparatively lucky. And we know what we're in for living here. I mean, it's mandatory flood insurance and um, you definitely, it's like a known area. Anybody in Tampa Bay knows this area floods worse than others, considering it's all coastal. So, it is what it is. But um, everyone's back to school now. Everything's dried up and cleaned up outside. So I get to be here stitching and watching uh, floss tube and working on new designs for the shop, um, which is fun. It's fun for me. Okay, so I do have a little bit of haul to talk about. And when I say little, please, it, it is little and nothing fancy. Um, last week I was talking about how my style is kind of simple and smaller pieces. Yeah, that lasted like one second. I, I'm glad I'm not a teenager because I, not that it's peer pressure, but just I, <laughs> I fall into group um, preferences pretty easily apparently. Um, I'm like all about it. I think, is it Mirabella? Mirabelli? I've never even used beads before, and I certainly would not have ever thought that my aesthetic would be like ladies in nice dresses. And I'm like, I wanna do that. I wanna do one over one. I wanna do linen. Um, last week I was saying that anything more than, you know, more fancy than 14 count Ada is like, ooh. Um, and I already bought some 32 even weave and started on it on a mega <laughs> that I need to learn how to park on. So, um, Funny stuff, it's fun, it's fun. I'm enjoying it a lot. So um, I'll show you the little bit of haul that I have. Um, whips, my works in progress, which I did get a lot done on. Last week I did not show all my stash or um, some other things that I want to address. And um, I, I have some 
updates, like not really corrections, but just some things that I was wondering about last week that I can uh, talk about this week. So we'll get started with that. Last week I showed you this, which was supposed to be a large Rapunzel stained glass type design. And I didn't know where it was from. I knew I got it bootleg from Pinterest and I was pretty sure it was bootleg because it's like JPEGs and not PDFs. I mean, it's enough. I think it's like high enough quality that I can continue to stitch it because obviously the border is pretty easy, but you know, once I get into the middle, are the symbols going to be clear and whatever. So I did, I think I found it with some help from people on Stitch Mania. Um, it was at an Etsy shop, uh, Do Amici in England or Great Britain anyway. And this is the picture of the image. So it is pretty much like the one that I have from Pinterest, but it's not exact. Um, this black is not just um, like part of the printing. It is actual stitching and, and the color is actually like dark chocolate brown or something, but it looks black. Um, and to be truthful, I don't like this one as much. The one that I have on Pinterest, um, I was talking on Facebook with some people back and forth and we decided that probably Irmos um, 78, I think is the name that is stamped on all these free cross stitch patterns that are very similar to other people's creations. Um, but it actually was changed. Um, the, let's see, what are some things that are different? Um, for sure these flowers are different on the one from Pinterest. There are less flowers, they come down. Um, I think this flower situation is not exactly the same. And definitely around here is different. Um, this is blue instead of chocolate, and I'm not sure, I would need to look at the pattern because I did print it, but um, I'm not sure it's as wide or that this is as wide. Um, I also wonder about like in the hair, in this picture it looks like, you know, this is not all the same color. And honestly, uh, I just don't think I actually like this one more. So having purchased it, I don't feel bad using the one from Pinterest if I can continue to use the pattern, if it's clear enough. So we'll see, because I really haven't obviously gotten into any of this stuff that's gonna be harder to tell what to do and, and count. Um, so we'll see if I end up using this. Like I said, I won't feel guilty using the one from Pinterest that was free and clearly a knockoff of this design. Um, because I did pay for this, so. Almost like I'm just making my own changes, borrowed from someone who wanted to put them out there for free. So we'll see, I might end up doing this. I, I won't pull out the blue, that's not me, and I wouldn't start over either and just chuck this, so. I, but I still could easily continue with these side thin bars um, here that I've barely started and just leave this blue and still stitch the inside um, the way this pattern has it. Also, I think that like these thicker dark lines, I don't think that's on the Pinterest version. I think it's just back stitching and the colors touch flush. So we'll see. Stay tuned on that because I do still love this design either way. If I had to stitch this one, I love this. I love Rapunzel. She's so cute. She's so sweet. Um, so I will be stitching that. All right. Um, last week I showed you uh, Four Seasons Chairs. It's a kit by Janlin. Um, Diana, Diana Thomas uh, designed it. And that is here. And I realized that I had more done on it than I kind of remembered. Um, and it's not full coverage. So really there's sand that comes down like maybe this far and that's pretty much it. And it's, you know, it's like jig jag. There's a cup that has like a, a lime in it or something, kind of like a fancy beachy looking drink that will be down here. But this week I got a lot of clouds in, which are just half stitches, so bonus. Um, there's gonna be some birds back stitched up there. I also put the book on and the sunglasses. And there was some extra stuff in the chair that it'd be hard to even tell for me what got added because it's so light and the color, you know, until it's back stitched. It, I mean, these darker lines are obvious, but in there, there are even more colors in here. So some stuff more on the chair, all the clouds, 
the book and the sunglasses got added. And emotionally, I was like, oh, kits aren't so bad because I'm not a huge kit fan. Um, I prefer to have my bobbins of thread that I wound that look nice that are in my little plastic box. And I don't prefer the cards where I'm guessing the colors, but I was being dramatic. I think I was thinking back to like a Walmart kit, which I'm sure was probably Jalen or Dimensions back then from when I was like nine. Um, and the colors were just like wadded in a knot or possibly like these tiny kits where the colors are not necessarily that organized, but, uh, or not organized, but just, uh, separated. But how much help do you really need for this? So I think I was being dramatic. When I look back at this, the cards, um, the card has the numbers as, I mean, you all will probably know. I mean, the card is there. And when I look on the chart, it says go to 11 and it's pretty clear. You see how wadded up it is, but it looks ugly when I go to pull it out. Nothing is tangled. It's, it's really not that painful to work on. So I will probably finish this, I would say this month for sure. And that would just be because I am working on a lot of things. That's another thing that I, uh, <laughs> oh, I don't like working on a lot of things. That probably won't be good for me. I wouldn't want a lot of starts and then work on this, work on that. Yeah, right. I started some more things this week and I already have prepped to start even more. So I'm glad you girls and boys are good influences. Otherwise it'd be a problem because I'm like jumping on every bandwagon. Um, this is another whip that I didn't show last week. This is one of my designs. I went to London two years ago with my husband and being a huge Harry Potter fan, we went to platform nine and three quarters and obviously we rode the tube a lot um, just around town while we were there. So this is gonna be a mind the gap. It's small. I have it on my Etsy shop as a five by seven. This obviously is smaller. Um, it will be more like a two by three and I'm gonna just have to back stitch the mind the gap rather than um, actually stitching it because it would be way too big for this. So that's something that I can mindlessly just outline the red circle. And when I outline the outer edge and the inner side, I would just be able to go without counting, which I really enjoy that. That's nice with the more simple designs where it's not confetti and it's a lot of the same color go around the edge and then you don't have to worry about counting. You know, I have the baby here, I have two older kids that come home, and I have dogs and stuff, so, and I just enjoy maybe stitching while I'm watching a little TV, so if I don't have to count, that's nice. I can just outline and then stitch away. Um, and this, uh, this update is an example of that. Last week I showed you that I accidentally did Buzz Light Your Ears on Ada that was borderline too small maybe it would have been okay if i centered the design but still there would have been that much to play with in framing like it would have been a small border all the way around um this is a picture of what it will look like um depending on obviously fabric size it's about uh 50 by 70 stitches or so i forget exactly um and so i'm stitching this and i had to throw it out because the top of the ears were <laughs> not even one whole row of Ada from fraying off. Um, I'm really bad about that, but I'll get better. So last week, to be brave, I started it on some 18 count that I just had. And um, so this is where I'm at now. I can't wait to back stitch it. Yesterday, my husband was mentioning, oh, I can't even see it. So of course he got a dirty look, which he could see. And I explained to him that backstitching really will make it come to life. <clears throat> I was tempted to backstitch just to help the hat pop. I'm of course anxious to get Andy's foot, you know, the foot on there claiming Andy's toy. I mean, that's going to be fun, but um, I didn't, I just kept stitching because I, this is a large piece I didn't cut down. And I, um, I was saying last week, I stitch a lot just to live in a Ziploc bag. I just like it and don't really, um, have never really thought about spending a lot of money or really kind of any money framing. I mean, maybe like a $10 frame from Michael's that was $5 because it was on sale and I throw it in a frame myself. But other than that, um, I just don't put a lot in. So then I end up just putting them in a bag and I enjoy that. Uh, I also showed my monthly stamps, my, uh, Lizzie Kate stamps and I do frame those, but 
it's low key. <laughs> I think I might try to fill this whole thing up with uh, ears because I'm designing away for the Etsy shop and um, I like them. So <laughs> that's at least good just for myself. I like them so I'll uh, probably stitch a lot more and just keep putting them on here and just have it like a showcase of uh, ears. So um, this needle minder is from No Name Needle Minders on Facebook. Um, Katie the Stash Queen made it and Peter Pan is my favorite guy. Love it. And it just breaks my heart that Peter Pan's flight at Disney World is always like a million hour wait um, because it's so good. Love Peter Pan. Okay. That? Um, let's see. I was going to start uh, or I mentioned that I had the February stamp and that I didn't really like the content on it because I did all those stamps like I was really good I knocked them out probably in six months just kind of in my spare time when I was working um, a, a few years ago and I always have had them in a ziploc and this past year I started displaying them in the 8x8 frame um, so I looked back at February and started this and I got a lot done on it um, you know because I was working on other things too, but with hurricane days and not much ability to do anything outside the home, I, I did get to go on here. I'm just doing 14 count white Ada. It's what I did before. Um, and I'm just using DMC cottons. And that's also all I've used. And I'm pretty frugal. So unless I do a really special design that would be enhanced with something like silks or floss that I'm still learning all about. Um, I'm probably just going to stick with DMCs because I about had a heart attack when they stopped being 25 cents a piece, which I know Joanne's just had a sale and I did stock up on some things I needed. But I pretty much have most of the colors. So yeah, this is cute. It will have little buttons on it. Here they are. And it just has a few colors. It's not full coverage inside. So I should have that done in a couple weeks as well, even if I'm just kind of side stitching it. Okay. Um, I showed you this little kit. I got that, this at Hobby Lobby this summer. Unfortunately, um, my little 24 year old cousin passed away in May. And um, when I was up visiting with my aunt, we just were talking about him and it, came about that foxes will probably be a symbol of Michael for my aunt. So I picked this up and I was going to stitch it for and just turn it into like a little fridge magnet or something. Um, so hopefully I'll start that soon. I think that not starting this yet has a lot to do with kind of purposely wanting to avoid it. Very sad to lose someone young. I mean, I know it's sad losing any family member, but a tragic loss way before you would think was their time is, is hard. So this one is for Michael and Aunt Claudia. And hopefully I'll uh, get that done and sent up to her. I know that she would enjoy it. I know it's important for her and a lot of uh, parents that experience loss to know that their child isn't just forgotten, um, you know, because life goes on all around you and that happens anytime someone passes away, but I think it really resonates and hurts a little extra when it's someone young that should be graduating from college and, you know, getting married and having kids and so many milestones that they missed out on. So um, make sure that she knows that they're in my thoughts still all the time. All right, so there's that little kit. Um, I'll show you one more piece. Last week I showed you a few pieces, like the witch's feet, um, the buzz ears, uh, and a few of my months that I'm really bad at judging Ada, which I think it's just a block of like effort because how hard is it? It's just really simple division and I can use a calculator. So I don't, I just cut it and then I start stitching in the wrong spot and then I get far like I did on the buzz ears and realize the Ada size is not going to work. Here's another piece. <clears throat> tragic, tragic ornament from last year. Brewer is my baby. He will be one in a month. And this was for him. Um, 
And you know, you can't exactly tell, but there's a different color around the edges and the bottom of the beard, just to give a little bit of shade and detail. So this is one that took me longer than some of the others from that same book, um, the Mason Jar Lid book. And look at it. And I was being so good. You should have seen the size of the Ada that this started on. It had at least three inches of Ada all the way around. And I went to finish it. Tragic. I've got to watch some tutorials and see what you all do because this is so sad. I just started cutting and I would put like more and more glue and more and more. I was like, I'll just stitch it on to the backing and I had, you know, a little bit of batting in there or a polyfill, I don't remember. Cause I quilt as well. So sometimes I just throw a little layer of batting just to give it a little fluff. And then it's not sticking out everywhere and uneven. But yeah, this went so downhill and I just, I was calling my mom, I was like, help me. And she, it was, she lives two states away. So she was like, just stop. So I'm going to give this to the baby, you know, here, Merry Christmas. This was your first Christmas ornament. There might be hope. I mean, there's not much Ada, but depending on like how you could cover the edges with ribbon or something like that, like the top is pretty mangled. I mean, the whole thing is mangled, but at least on the sides, there's enough to, I don't know. Poor guy. Um, that was from this Leisure Arts Jar Topper book. I showed that last week. There he is. And I've turned a bunch of these into ornaments and sent them away. I've been doing this for two Christmases now. Um, and I've made a lot of these. And I showed some of the finishes last week. And they're not terrible. I mean, they might have like a little blue showing. But they, for me, like very pleased. I like them a lot. But downhill so fast with this guy. So good news is I can always redo them. Yeah, right. Okay, um, so now a little bit of the stash, because this is, I'm going to talk about stitch-alongs in a little minute, and there's a reason um, that I'm kind of avoiding trying to start one. There's actually a few reasons I would feel guilty with the money. I'm staying home now um, after working for the last 10 years, but we had little bitty, and I don't want to... I took one year off last year from teaching and then it kind of the decision was made to just kind of stay home indefinitely and maybe when he starts school or can go to preschool versus daycare maybe I don't know but um so that's one reason the money and probably much bigger than that is just how much stuff I have and I just feel like I need to stitch a lot more of it before I keep buying other stuff. So this is a start that I didn't show last week. Um, I did mention that I love Halloween, which looking at Stitch Mania and Floss Tube, uh, I'm not alone there. Clearly I'm in good company. Halloween is good. This is the Stony Creek Harvest Haunts collection. Um, I believe I got this at Hobby Lobby a couple years ago, and it's that haunted house right here. So I have this tree and this fence. And this is so many colors. It looks like maybe only three colors of purple, but I feel like it was so much more. Now looking at it, I wonder, maybe I'll just do some variegated and it wouldn't look like the picture, but it still would read, I think, pretty similar. Eh, I don't know. I love this, but I don't know that I'm ever gonna get it done. I mean, I'm. I, it's definitely not on my, not even try list, but who knows if I'll ever get it. This one is probably one more like what I would <laughs> ever finish. But I, these are so cute. And they have some uh, glow-in-the-dark stitching is called for, which I'm probably not going to use. I'll just use some DMC substitution. So maybe by next year. That's pretty cute. That also is just on 14 count Ada. It looks gray. That's from years ago, and I'm going to be good about knowing what I'm using now so I can share that, but eh, great. Also, I have this Stony Creek um, collection, Santa's uh, Trekking Team. And again, that's from Hobby Lobby a few years back. Um, you can stitch a lot of these like in separate pieces. Like you see the truck is here and then here's the truck with a trailer. So it gives a little bit of option. They have some mini 
some things that you could do it smaller. Um, I've never started any of these. <laughs> never even started these, and this is years old. This has to be at least three years old, minimum. Probably, maybe four. Um, but these aren't that bad. I mean, it shouldn't be that hard to finish them. But then, you know, getting involved in this community, I'm looking at all the really good, like the really fun ones that are like confetti, but when they come together, it looks like a photograph. I mean, yesterday I was watching a video and I was like, my goodness, that looks like a photo or like it was painted on. It doesn't even look like stitches. So, I don't know. It's here. It's, nothing's going to happen to it. But again, do I really need to be joining Sal's when I've got this going on? And free stuff like Advent Animals, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. Okay, this book has a little bit of a story behind it. It's the Disney Home um, Classics Collection. And it has Dumbo, Bambi, and then also um, Peter, Wendy, um, Cinderella, Jungle Book, and Sleeping Beauty. I really like this one because I don't feel like there's that much um, merch for Jungle Book. I mean, right now with that new live action movie, you know, there probably won't be more, but you know, good old fashioned Disney is what I love. Remember my, um, <clears throat> excuse me, my needle minder. I picked the original Peter Pan movie poster. I just really love like the 60s uh, movies from Disney the most. They're the, my favorite ones, Jungle Book, Peter Pan, um, I, I like those ones from the 50s and 60s, although I really grew up on the ones from the 80s, but <clears throat> I guess Bambi really doesn't have that much stuff out either, or Dumbo. Dumbo does have some Fisher-Price little people, so that's kind of current and uh, relevant, but as far as anything else, I don't see it a ton. So I had this in college about 15 years ago. I bought this in, in Gainesville, Florida, so I know Gators uh, <laughs> can all colleges are, you know, you, you love your team, but I know that Gator hater is common, so don't hold that against me, but I bought this in Gainesville, Florida, and I had it in a bag because I was a Girl Scout leader, and we made these little bags one time at camp, and uh, I, I had this and a started Cinderella. No, lying. Wendy. It was Wendy because Peter Pan's my favorite. Um, and I don't know what happened to it. I tore this house down about two years ago looking for this because I was like, I know I wouldn't have thrown it away. I would have just stashed it somewhere. Um, but I, I think I did pitch it in one of the moves. So that's, I, I can't believe it. Watch it, it'll turn up one day. But I can't imagine where because I really, really got out the cross stitch dogs to smell for it. Um, this is definitely my style. Not a lot of color changing and, and like, even if there are a lot of colors on a design, they're all in blobs together. Nothing where it jumps around one or two here or there. It's, I mean, Peter Pan and Wendy have about four colors on that whole thing. <laughs> so it'll be fun. It'll be fun to stitch. It'll be easy, mindless, and um, I definitely will love the outcome. So there are these, which I don't know what I would do with. Probably stitch them on something large. Um, or, you know, do two over, which is the same as 14 count on like 28 Joblin or something. Um, and maybe frame them, uh, cause along with Harry Potter and the baby's nursery, there's like a ton of Disney. Plus my 17 year old daughter, 18 in a month, her and the baby are born only two days apart. Um, they, she loves this stuff and wants it all the time anyway, um, from me. So, um, maybe I'll give it to her. So those are some, some of the reasons that I, I don't jump in on these stitch-alongs because I really have plenty to be doing. And um, it's just so fun to think of the stitch-along situation that like everybody's posting pictures and what they're doing different. And, and I mean, most of them look the same, but it's just fun. So I'll just like stand behind the tree looking at you all doing your stitch-alongs like out on the playground, breathing heavy. And that's how I'll enjoy the stitch alongs, okay? Is that too weird? Yes. Um, haul. I did get the DMCs, like I said. I already turned them into bobbins, but I did document that with pictures on my Instagram channel at Stitch It Floss Boss Stitches, so you can see it there. Um, and I'm sure you're familiar with the old DMCs. 
so there was that and I got um, a Q-snap I, I sort of have a Q-snap it's it buzzes on it right now and I know it's naughty to leave work on frames which I mean Rapunzel has been out of this for like two weeks so yeah I know it's naughty but maybe I'll you know getting the Q-snap will help um, but this is not, I mean, it's not the old fashioned hoop, but boy, it, it's more mutilating than a Q-snap, which I have the same type of frame as a Q-snap for my quilting, um, two of them. But for my mega stitch, I thought maybe I could fit it on there and just use the edge because it's not nearly that long, but it's going to be that wide, at least the full piece of fabric, not the full design. But I got a Q-snap, so that should count. And I got some needle minders. I already showed you Peter, and I already mentioned that these are um, Katie's from No Name Needle Minders and the admin of Stitch Mania and um, the Stash Queen. So I got these domino, small domino needle minders. Um, my princesses, of course, because I love, love, love Disney. And I really like tattoo art. Um, and these are pinups, so that's cool. And got this little Julie thing, very pretty. Can't stop rubbing it, probably gonna rub the pieces off. And of course, some love potion, some Harry Potter love potion. At a Brewer's Baby Shower, the gifts were uh, sanitizers with potion stickers on them. For, and the stickers came from Etsy, my girlfriends did that. So you gotta love potions, and who doesn't love love potion? Anybody who doesn't, just slip them some and they will. So I got needle minders. I got my Q-Snap, which is Amazon Prime assures me is coming today. And I got some more uh, Kranich. Um, so I got gold and like white shimmer. And I already had some silver from a project I did with my students in Cross Stitch Club two years ago before I went on leave. And my plan for these is for uh, Brooks Books Advent Animals. Said I was going to bring that up. So that's sort of a stitch along. I mean, everybody's doing it. And uh, so it's nice to kind of see what other people do and their fabric choices and finishing choices. For me, I'm for sure making them into ornaments. I have, like I showed, a lot of cross stitch ornaments and a lot of potential for more. And we do kind of put up a lot of trees. Um, at Bell's, a Florida store, we got a pre-lit pre palm tree, artificial tree. Um, looks just like an artificial Christmas tree as far as the way the branches are on the top. And then just a brown pole with some of that same fluffiness, but in brown, wrapped around. And we use that for our Jesse tree, which is a uh, religious activity around Advent, read every day. A designated scripture and um, hang up a special ornament that the children made at CCD um, that represents that scripture. So we have that tree and that tradition every night at dinner and we light the advent wreath and we decorate obviously our main Christmas tree. The children, the older two children, have small trees just from the Target dollar bin. I think they were like the $3 trees and they're probably about 12 inches, the actual tree, and then a few more inches for the burlap chunk at the bottom to stand it up. Um, so we definitely do not shy from lots of trees to decorate and um, I'm, I think I'm gonna do Brooks Books Advent Animals as individual ornaments rather than one wall hanging even though I saw Lindy Stitches wall hanging and it's beautiful. So um, maybe if she gets sick of it, she can give it to me for my birthday. Cause that would be great. But I can just see myself trying to make a wall hanging. I mean, hold on. Do I have to pull out exhibit Z on, yeah. I would stitch that whole advent animal thing and then be showing it like this. So I'll just do them as ornaments. And I plan to use this um, kind of jazzy felt as the backing. It has glitter in it. It's called uh, Friendly Glitter Felt by the Coonan Group. I just got it at Joann's last year. And they have more colors as well with the glitter wrapped in. And it's 
it's thicker than normal felt and it's um, stiff. It has something running in there to make it stiffer than uh, typical felt because I have a ton of felt also, but you know, it's like noodle, which would be okay on the back of an ornament, but I like this stiff stuff. It kind of helps me finish it because it, it holds up. And once I layer the ornament on the top and then batting, again, if I just use batting rather than polyfill, like I can cut a square of it to the correct shape and it holds its shape and it's not like a lump over here and a lump over there where I over or under stuffed it. Um, and then I can put ribbon around and kind of control the use of glue a little bit more. Also, my mom might be around um, more in the holidays. Um, they live about a 10 hour drive, so we definitely don't see each other all the time, but uh, it's not the end of the world. We definitely get together many times a year. So hopefully she'll help me because she's a fabulous quilter. And so, you know, she, her abilities at the sewing machine are way greater than mine. Um, and just her finishing, I'm, I'm so impatient with stuff. Like I stitch this beautiful thing or, you know, I think it's beautiful and then trash it <laughs> because I'm like, glue, glue. Um, so those are my advent animal plans. And I, I think that I could do them for this year. I know there are 25 of them, but they're not that big. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to say that I could finish them this year. So you, we'll go ahead and, uh, see how that goes. Um, they're all on my iPod and I have these materials. So see, and for the cloth, I am just going to use 14 count. Um, they're smaller and they're more okay they're like less fancy of a design so i feel like it doesn't need some kind of fancy you know small stitches beautiful like the Mir mirabellas um i'm probably saying that wrong but i think you all know what i'm talking about so i inherited a stash from my mom's neighbor someone i grew up with and she has all these adas in in a lot more colors than this i probably have like 30 in my drawer here um, of these all different colors and um, it's kind of funny because they're irregulars <laughs> I mean it's they're select irregulars okay so don't get it twisted these are select who knows where these came from back in the day she and my mom worked at peace goods fabric if you all had any of those in your area and that's like 25 years ago and beyond and then it turned into May's fabric and I don't remember Oh, then it sold to Hancock, and now up in Chattanooga, Hancock's is closing, and um, in Florida, I've never seen one. Granted, I don't really search that much, but all we have is Joann's. I mean, Walmart has some fabric, but, I mean, we have specialty shops, but, um, like, little mom-and-pop quilting stores and stuff like that, but as far as any chains, Joann's is basically it. So I don't know if this is from Peace Goods back in the day when it was like going out of business or if it was just some kind of sale and there are no price tags on them, but the amount that she had is a lot. Um, and she also gave me some rolls of uh, Charles Craft. So that's, you know, those are nice and they're not irregular. They're not select irregulars. But I'll just do those uh, Advent animals on, this, on the irregulars because I've used them several times, and there's nothing wrong with them. Um, I wouldn't do some fancy, beautiful, huge design on them, but there's nothing wrong with them. They're fine, and I'm sure if I did find something irregular, I could find a chunk big enough for the ornament. She also had these little doll cups, so lots of funny stuff in there. All right, um, I did do a mega start, but I want to learn how to park before I introduce it. Um, because I just like how that looks when it's like another page done and it's so beautiful. Um, so I guess that's it. I'm going to try to stitch away this week and really work on finishing a few things up. I didn't even touch Stinky the Skunk that I showed last week that has like 30 stitches or less to finish. Well, it does have a lot of back stitching, so I shouldn't say it's 30 stitches. Um, it has a lot of back stitching, but I might finish him or her. And uh, I probably could finish Lizzie Kate's February stamp and just make progress on the summer chair and work on the mega start getting it all right and uh, started to a point that I want to show it. Maybe make some decisions about Rapunzel, but she's probably on the back burner for now. So 
that was my week and I will see you guys next week. Visit me at uh, my shop on Etsy, Floss Boss Stitches, and on Instagram at Floss Boss Stitches. Have a good week.